So the last type of function that we want to cover are inverse functions. Um, it, one of the things that I asked you in class last time was to kind of brainstorm and think a little bit about what are the types of elementary functions, things that we've seen somewhere either in algebra, trigonometry, um, even pre-cal, that we have not yet been able to take the derivative of. And as far as I can tell, there's only one left. We've done square roots, we've done polynomials, we've done rational, we've done functions inside functions. We've got everything. We've got logarithms, exponentials, trig functions. But the one set of trig functions that we're missing are arc tangent, arc secant, arc cosine, arc sine, all of the inverse functions, right? And when I say the word arc cosine, some of you may be more familiar with it as written as something like this, okay? Meaning the inverse cosine. I can't remember what notation I used earlier in the semester whenever we were covering inverse functions in our kind of our algebra review section, but this author uses primarily the arc cosine notation. Some of the confusing, you know, this, this is a little bit confusing because we're tempted to make it, uh, sorry, tempted to think of it as 1 over cosine of x, which it's not, okay? This means the inverse of cosine, which means it's the function that undoes whatever cosine does to x. So if you plug in x into cosine, if you want to undo the cosine, you want to do the inverse operation of it, you do what's called the arc cosine or the inverse cosine. So the question now is how do we find derivatives of um, inverse functions? So in, I'm not, the, the proof for this is in the appendix of your textbook. It's not even in the section. And I'm going to omit the proof. I just want to give you um, the theorem that says if we know what a function is and we have its inverse, that we can find out what its derivative of the inverse function is using the original function and the inverse itself. So let's say if, let me go ahead and put my rule back on there, if um, f inverse is the inverse function of some known function, then here's what we know. The derivative of the inverse function. So imagine in our case, f of x is like cosine. f inverse would be arc cosine. So we can find the derivative of arc cosine. It's always going to be 1 over the derivative of the parent function, right? the original function, with the inverse function plugged in. It is f prime composed with f inverse. And let me give you an example. Oop, too far. Let's uh, consider f of x equals the tangent of x, where x goes from negative pi over 2 up to pi over 2. I think you'll remember this, but one of the things that you have to be careful of with inverse functions is they have to be one-to-one -one before they actually have an inverse. One-to-one -one means they have to pass a horizontal line test. So what we do with trig functions is we restrict them to a certain domain. And we say, all right, so the inverse tangent only gives us values when we're talking about tangent going from negative pi over 2 to positive pi over 2. Right? So the graph of tangent from negative pi over 2 to positive pi over 2 looks something like this, right? So the graph of the inverse function looks something like, all right, comes this way, goes up this way, and then like that. I missed that. Something like that. All right. That's like arc tangent. So what we want to know is if we know tangent and we know the derivative of tangent, can we use that to find the derivative of the inverse function, or what is the derivative of arc tangent of x. Okay, so by 
the theorem above the derivative, I'm just going to rewrite the same thing I have above, of f inverse of x is going to be 1 over the derivative of f with f inverse of x plugged in. Now we know that f prime of x is what? If f of x is tangent of x, do you remember what the derivative of tangent of x was? Secant squared. Okay, that's one of the ones I want you to know. I want you to know sine, cosine, and tangent. All of the hyperbolic, or not hyperbolic, all of the uh, reciprocal trig functions we can look up. Meaning <coughs> cosecant, secant, and cotangent we can look up when we need to. But you need to know what the derivative of sine is, what the derivative of cosine is, what the derivative of tangent is. And in this case, it's secant squared. Okay, now I'm going to use a trig identity that makes something nice happen. Do you remember, and it's probably in the front of your textbook, yeah, under Pythagorean identities, there's the, there's the main trig identity that we all remember, sine squared plus cosine squared equals 1, one of the most important trig identities that we have. There's a variation of that. If you divide through by cosine squared on that, you end up with the equation that says that um, tangent squared plus 1 is equal to secant squared. This is the same thing as tangent of x squared plus 1. Okay, that's just a trig identity. The reason I do that is because what we're going to do whenever we plug into this formula, we're going to plug in the inverse, which is arctangent, into the derivative. So we're going to actually plug arctangent in for x right there. If I plug arctangent into secant squared, it's hard to tell what happens. But if I plug arctangent into tangent, we use the fact that it's an inverse. So notice, using this formula right here, I'm going to come around, boom, right here, and do 1 over, now f prime is this guy, tangent squared of x plus 1. So I'm going to do tangent squared of something plus 1. And according to this formula, this formula right here, I'm going to plug in 2f prime the inverse function. That is, I'm going to plug in this guy, which means that's what I'm going to put right here. So I'm going to put arc tangent of x right there. So here's what that looks like. I'm just going to I'm going to take that square out and think of it as remember what tangent squared means tangent of something squared. That's the same thing I've written just by rewriting the square as the square of the tangent of arctan. Now what does tangent of arctangent do? They cancel each other, right? They're inverse functions. So the whole property of an inverse function is that this right here is just x. So what do you end up with? So the derivative of arctangent of x is 1 over x squared plus 1 just by applying that formula. Again, if you'll notice in your book on the front page of this you've got differentiate derivatives and integrals. You've got a whole table here of different derivatives to remember. If you scan down to number, I guess it's 21, you have the general version of that rule. Okay? Looks like this. 
if I do d dx of the arc tangent of some function u, that's going to look like u prime over u squared plus 1. This is just the chain rule version of that. So if you have something besides just x inside, like you have a 2x or a cosine of x or an x squared, you can find the derivative of the arctangent by taking the derivative of what's inside over u squared plus 1, right? Same thing as I just derived there above, only the one above is just when what's inside the arctangent is just x. Now we could repeat this for arc cosine, arc sine, arc cosecant, arc secant, and arc cotangent. But in the end, you're just going to get a, a table of what all those derivatives are. I don't want you to necessarily be able to derive this for an inverse function. In fact, I'm not even going to ask you to use this theorem in your notes, sorry, in your homework or on a test. All right, I just wanted to show you the theorem so you see where the derivative of arctangent comes from. Now I want you to be able to use this kind of formula. So if I gave you, for example, a question that looked like um, y is equal to, in fact, I'll even throw you a different one, arc sine of x plus x square root of 1 minus x squared, and I say find y prime. This is the kind of thing I want you to do out of this section. So what am I going to do to find the arc sine? I haven't told you what it is. Am I going to go through and use the theorem to derive it? No. I'm going to go and look it up in a table. Okay. I'm going to look up the fact that d dx of arc sine of x is... Actually, what I'll even... Since this is what you're going to see in the table that you look it up in, arc sine of, ooh, what was that? Huh. Arc sine of u is u prime. This is number 19. It's over the square root of 1 minus u squared. So in our case, to apply this equation to arc sine of x, that just means that I'm going to get whatever's inside the derivative of that, which is 1, over the square root of 1 minus whatever's inside squared, so x squared. Do you understand what I'm doing? I'm, I'm using this, which has already been derived for me, in a table, and I notice that whatever u is, is what I need to plug in right here for u. So x, if I take the derivative of x, I just get 1, and if I put in the x right here, I just get square root of 1 minus x squared. So that's the derivative of just the first term. Then you come along and you do the rest of this derivative. Apply the product rule. First times the derivative of the second, which is going to be 1 half 1 minus x squared, sorry, 1 minus x squared to the negative 1 half power times a negative 2x, plus the second, which is 1 minus x squared to the 1 half times the derivative of the first, which is a 1. There's a 2 right there. And so let's just do a little algebra. 1 over the square root of 1 minus x squared, multiplying this x and the 1 half and the minus 2x. The 2's cancel. That minus will become a minus here. I'll have an x times x, which is x squared, over the square root of 1 minus x squared. So that's the negative 1 half moves it down to the bottom, plus the square root of 1 minus x squared. Which I would rewrite as 
1 minus x squared over the square root of 1 minus x squared plus the square root of 1 minus x squared. Have I lost anybody? Or are we okay? We're good? I would go ahead and take this one more step and combine those into one fraction. Right? How do you combine two fractions like this together? Lowest common denominator, which in this case would be this denominator here. So multiply by the square root of 1 minus x squared on top and bottom. So on bottom, I'll still have the square root of 1 minus x squared on top. I'll have this 1 minus x squared here plus, right, 1 minus x squared square rooted times that gives me a 1 minus x squared again. So it's 2 minus 2x squared over the square root of 1 minus x squared. Actually, I can go further. I'm going to stop there, but that's good enough for me. Okay, so on inverse functions, you just need to be able to use the inverse function um, results that could be derived in the same way derived the tangent one. Okay, any questions about that? We've got one more section that we're going to cover. Um, it's more of an applied, it's our first kind of application section. Um, it's called related rates. We're going to cover that on Friday. I will give you a... Um, review. In fact, I'll post the review on Blackboard in the next couple of days, so you can go ahead and start taking a look at it. Um, and then we'll talk about our test on Friday. Okay? All right, you guys are dismissed. Make sure I get your homework before you leave. Just leave it on the corner of the desk up here.